Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. And today we're gonna to be continuing with our series on carburetor chokes. Today we're gonna to be adjusting our choke stat lever and we're also gonna be making the adjustments to our fast idle speed. Uh, if you haven't checked out part one of the video where I run through the five adjustments that you need to check and adjust on your carburetor choke system to make sure it's working properly, check out the link up top or in the description. But right now we're gonna jump in and fine tune the first two, starting with our choke stat lever. Let's take a walk over to the bench and take a look at what we're working with. All right, so here we have one of our core carburetors. I've gone ahead and hooked up the choke system so we can work on this. You can do all these adjustments on the car. It's just a little bit easier uh, with the camera angles to show you over here on the bench. All right, so we're gonna start with the choke stat lever. Now what the choke stat lever is, is that is the mechanism that connects, contacts the choke coil here, and it determines how much tension the choke coil is putting on the lever, which then connects to the choke rod here and up to the actual butterfly valve on your choke. If the choke stat lever is misadjusted, um, your coil here may be putting too much or too little tension onto the actual choke valve uh, and that affects the amount of time it takes to uh, turn off as the engine warms up. You want this set to spec so that as the engine gets hot and requires more air and less fuel in the mixture that the choke can adjust to that in the proper way. So we're gonna start by checking the adjustment of the choke stat lever by removing either the three screws or drilling out the rivets that hold the uh, actual choke coil into the case here. So we're gonna go ahead and start by taking these off first. So now that we've got our screws out, we're gonna go ahead and get this choke coil out. May need to take a uh, small screwdriver and just pry it out. Be careful because there is a gasket underneath here. Okay, so here we have our choke stat lever. And you can see how this just manipulates the choke. And the coil here, which will engage with this piece and put tension on it. All right, real quick before we continue, I'm just gonna explain something because I get a lot of flack for this in the comment section. Um, you can see here I have the choke coil with the outer case. Now on older mechanical carburetors, in order to make this adjustment, you would simply loosen the three screws or drill out the rivets around it, take a screwdriver and place it in the center here and you could actually rotate it and adjust the amount of tension that the coil actually puts on the lever. And that is 100% true. However, in later electronic uh, carburetors, GM actually went and machined a notch into the side of the housing here, or the, uh, the coil here, that actually corresponds to another notch here on the housing. So when the choke is uh, the choke coil is fully inserted into the housing, you cannot rotate it. That's where this adjustment comes into play. These carburetor chokes are one size fits all from about 1981 moving forward. Um, I know some guys have said in some of the forums that they grind this notch down or they uh, eliminate this notch here, however they have to do it, in order to put a little bit of play or adjustment into the choke coil. Uh, in my opinion, you're just compensating for another problem uh, that you may have in your carburetor or your choke system when you do that. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, these were not meant to be, or to have the ability to be rotated to adjust the tension and therefore the amount of time uh, that it takes the choke to disengage. So this adjustment is fairly easy to do. Uh, with the coil out, you're not going to be able to engage the choke system, so you just have to take your finger, move the lever as far back as it will go, and the butterfly valve on top of your carburetor should be engaged. 
Uh, next, what you need to do is take a uh, point one two zero, either a gauging tool or a drill bit works fine. You can pick up a point one two zero drill bit off of Amazon, eBay, eBay, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever you need, and you'll notice that there is a small hole that's machined into the choke housing here. All you want to do is insert the bit into that tool and make sure that your choke stat lever is just contacting the edge of this bit while it's inserted in the hole. Now you can see on this carburetor there's a little bit of play. That's not good, you want to adjust that out. And you do that by bending the choke rod up here at the top of the valve. Take a flathead screwdriver, remove this screw. Careful, it's very easy to lose. Take a set of needle nose pliers and bend this until the drill bit is just contacting the edge of the lever while it's inserted in the hole. This is too much play. If I ever use this carburetor, I'm going to have to adjust it out. But that's it. It's not that difficult. It can be done on the car. Then once you're finished, simply take your coil, line this piece here on the back up with the lever. Oh, make sure, don't forget your gasket. Apologize for that. Put our gasket back in. Most carburetor or any good carburetor rebuild kit Will include, will include new screws or rivets and a gasket. We're going to line the back of this up with the bottom of our lever and twist it till the notches line up and we can push this coil back in and replace our screws. So that's step one in making sure that your choke system is properly adjusted on your carburetor. Step two is making an adjustment to the fast idle, which I will now show you how to do. Let's head back over here and take a look. Guys, don't forget, before we move on to the fast idle cam, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video if you found it helpful, I really appreciate it. Plus, if you hit that subscribe button, you'll get notified whenever I put out a new video, and we will be finishing up this series soon, so make sure you don't miss it. All right, let's get back to it. Here we are back on the bench. And we're going to be taking a look here and working on our fast idle adjustment, which is this Torx bit located right here in the front of the carburetor. It's kind of hidden by the vacuum brake, but if you take a look, you will most certainly be able to see it. Now the fast idle adjustment is simply a number 15 Torx bit in this adjustment screw here. You can turn it in or out. Uh, the trick with this is you have to do it on the second step of the cam follower. And there are actually several stages to your fast idle. When you first push the gas, fast idle engages on the top step. You start the car, let it run for about 30, 40 seconds. The vacuum brakes kick in. You give it a little bit of gas and the fast idle cam will actually click down to the second step. And that's where you want to make this adjustment. So you want to do it after the car has been running about 30 or 40 seconds and you want to kick it down. Uh, the biggest issue I see with these is people set them way too high for some reason. Um, they're usually compensating for another running issue in the carburetor, either bad vacuum brakes or, or something like that. But you shouldn't be setting your RPMs over about 700 750, 800, 800 is the max on the second step of the follower or else when you start your car, it's gonna be running way too high. So simply dial this in, turn it up or down, set it to about 750, depending on the, how the car likes to run uh, and you should be good to go on your fast idle adjustment. This will definitely aid in your cold weather starting.
So that's it. The first two big adjustments that you need to make to the choke system on your electronic quadrajet or jewel jet carburetor to make sure that it starts and runs properly, especially as the cold weather hits. I hope this helps a lot of you guys, especially those of you that use these things as daily drivers, because leaving work, being stuck in a parking lot is not fun. So make sure you take a look at these. Hopefully your car starts the first time every time. Thank you for tuning in. See you on the next one.